the grace and the mercy of God. We're not justified by the law. And we, we don't operate from a cardinal perspective, but a spiritual perspective. You're listening today, and this is my introduction. We've got it. I, we had a, like about an hour, 21 segment that I have now cut down to uh, small segments for you to digest what we're talking about. So I want you to enjoy the study that's coming up. And just, but the bottom line is this, you're not under the law. I know people want you to be under the law. I know people want to sit there and condemn people under the law. But the fact is that you're not justified by the law. They know you're not justified by the law. And the fact is that you're not supposed to be trying to condemn other people uh, by the law because you live by faith. And we, we know that the law is there for a schoolmaster. We know that the law is good. But the problem is that it, it is weak to the flesh. You know what I mean? That, that that's Christ is saying, no, I don't want to be disconnected. And that's that's a good point you're bringing out. When we operate in the curse, we're operating in the disconnect. Right? Yeah. That and that's why you live by the law opposed to being in Christ. Because you're in Christ, then you God said, Christ glorified the Father, and the Father glorified Christ. If you be in Christ, and that's what these scriptures are going to call, you know, the ones that get ready to go over, they're going to talk about the fact that if you be in Christ, then we add to the promises. And that's why we want to stay in the spirit instead of in the flesh. We have warfare. That's why people sit there. I guess we don't understand why I'm going through warfare, why I'm going, why I'm struggling in this. Well, that's what the that's what life brings to the table. And then if we try to fight it by our own ability, that's when you're going to sit there and become more depressed, more uh, 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 disappointed in yourself, opposed to saying, Father, be merciful to me. That's why we want a believer to, to, to pray and fellowship with God daily, to, to fellowship with other believers daily, to read the word daily, so that you can look and find and understand the mercy and the grace that comes through God and the weapons, right? I like the fact is that the weapons found in 2 Corinthians 10, starting in verse 3, for the weapons of our warfare are not caught no. See, therefore, see, if you go by the law, you got to go by carnality. Because now you you try, you you got the law, and how are you supposed to do the law? That means you, your ability, right? Is you got to believe it on your ability to not fulfill the law. Or I guess I, I'm saying it right, your ability to fulfill the law through the flesh. And the, the scripture said, if you try to do it by the flesh, it's weak. Because the flesh is going to sit there and say, I don't want to do it. I want to do opposite of what the law tells me to do. And then you're trying to. Yeah, you, you. Huh? Well, I was just uh, saying that the you can't fulfill the law. You can't. We who are wrapped in this flesh cannot fulfill the law yeah. outside the spirit of Christ. Come on, brother. Come on. Yes. It, it is an impossibility. Um, that's this is that's why the law is stated mm -hmm. to be weak, <laughs> right? Because the in 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 our our ability to use it yes. as a means of justification, yes, and you get to put period, the yeah, because yes. we we cannot justify yourself. No. It is God that decrees justification. Yes. Not man. Not man. Because man can only justify you according to the flesh. Yes. Which is the desire to be self-pleasing. 
Come out. So if you please someone else, come out. Then you are justified in that person's eyes. In that person's eyes. But you may not be justified yourself. Come out. Because of the deeds and the actions and the life that you live. Yeah. So you can find people who are unjust. Come out. And they are like minded and like weighed. (laughs) And they call themselves justified because they live under a set of rules and laws that they abide by. Yes. But as far as God is concerned, Mm. and as far as them being held in a righteous manner that they are connected to God, they are far from God. Far from God. They are unattached. They are separated. Mm. They are condemned to an eternal life Mm. that is separated from the source of life, of love. So uh, to walk after the flesh Mm. means that there is something before the flesh. Yes. You can't walk after something and be in front of it. So (laughs) if you're walking after the flesh, then the flesh is before you and the flesh decides. But when you walk after Come the on. spirit, meaning Man. behind the spirit, on, then man. the spirit dictates Woo. the action. Come on. So it is imperative to really look at these words and fall into the pattern that it is suggestion, Come on, suggesting, because yeah. it makes so much sense. And it is so much easier yes. when... You allow the spirit of God Come to on. dictate your life. Yes. Then if if God is di- dictating your life, which should be, mm-hmm. because if a king decrees Come on now. and the subjects follow. So as long as that happens in your life, then yeah. the king is responsible for the provision, the protection, Come the Come uplifting. On. The care, it is the king's responsibility. But if you live outside of the kingdom, then the king has no responsibility or no ownership in you. Come on now. (laughs) That's the whole point, isn't it? You see, we we that's it. And we live by the law, we get disappointed. I think that's what A, some get mad at other people because they're really mad at themselves. It's almost like it's really reflecting, right? You, 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 you're reflecting your behavior on somebody else because reality, that's what you see in yourself. And, and yes, every day there's, the, there's that warfare that goes on every day. And sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. But you know that he's with you. Yeah. <laughs> he, he got the grace. It's just like a child trying to ride a bicycle. You... you that child is, is doing the best he can or she can. And, 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 and they got somebody, whoo, they got their parent or somebody teach them how to ride that bike. They said, don't let go, don't let go. And then, and you can always, if you let go, the child's gonna fall until one day <laughs> that child sits there and say, I got it, I got it. And the child, you know what? You know, like teaching a bicycle, the child doesn't even know when they got it. They don't even know that you're no longer holding on to them. You know what yeah. I mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <He'd be> like... <laughs> yeah, and you know what? And this is the other thing about that analogy. Woo! <laughs> the child will be fine as long as his eyes are set before him. Because then he knows his help is behind him. Woo! But as soon as that child looks back, then the faith in him being able to produce the effort that is being put forth yes. is gone because he looks back and he doesn't see his help. Come on. Come on. He doesn't see the parent holding on to the back of the bike. So he takes his eyes no different than the, the uh, than when Peter Woo. looked away from Christ. Yes. And he saw the storm. <laughs> he saw the wind. Yeah. He saw the wave. 
and he began to sing. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, that child is is riding that bike and he's straight and narrow on that line. Because the bro. child may not know how to turn yet. So he's on that straight and narrow, that line going forward. But when he begins to to want to look back, the wobble comes in. Yes, sir. You can see that wobble. <laughs> but then he concentrates on what's in front of him and that wobble goes away. Wobble. But when that child looks back, there's a great fall. <laughs> <laughs> it does happen, right? It, it yeah. Does, it keep on going. They just keep on prowling. And then they get their point like, I yep. know I got it. And they can hear the parents say, you got it. You, you know, like, I like that, right? The parents, some, you got it. You got yeah. it. That's a good analogy. <laughs> and they, they keep on riding. Yeah. yeah. Turn, turn the bike around and say, yeah. That's, that's, I can, I can imagine that. That that God is is as likewise. Yeah. And we we're walking in the spirit. Woo. Like you got it. You got it. Got it. <laughs> and then you go, I like that's a good one. Hey, look, the, the, the actor strip that goes with that is the woman, the, the lot wife looks back. And she yeah. turns out because she looked back. Even Christ told the people. Did this I'm gonna go let me go let me go bury my family. I was like, oh, he said, let the dead bury the dead, son. You need to keep going forward. That's how we need to yeah. press forward in life. Yeah, no, we said we all that a bag of potato chips. We said, matter of fact, you probably better say, I am not all that a bag of potato chips. I am not, but he is. <laughs> yeah. He is. That's what it's, matters. It's, uh... Yeah, yeah. You you get disappointed. You some people leave the body of Christ, leave the the gospel, leave the ministry because they're disappointed about somebody else's fault shortfall. That means you won't looking at Christ. You're looking at a person, and you're trying to get the the the, the uh, approval of a person when you're supposed to get the approval of Him. And yes, He's the one you're supposed to put, go in the closet and pray. And talk about your weakness. We sit there and you know try to give the weakness out of people. Sometimes they don't. Some people will use that as a weapon against you. You know, that's why we gotta sit there and keep focusing on yeah. it. So, so let's go ahead and wrap it with these scriptures here, brother. That's why I like it because I know we gotta look at it, right? We gotta study these, these things for ourselves and and meditate on it. But Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. He says right here, First Galatians three fifteen, brethren, I speak after the matter of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet it be confirmed. No man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He said not, and look at this, y'all. He said not to seed as of many, but as of one. And to that seed, which is the anointed. You know, I, I want to break that understanding there. They didn't say, when they say Jesus, Yeshua, Christ, they talk about referring to the humanity. <laughs> when they put Christ Jesus, they're referring to what? The anointed. Mm -hmm. Look at this. They just said Christ, the anointed. Yeah. The Messiah, the anointed one. The anointing is what we operate by. This power, the anointing of God. He said, which is Christ, the anointed. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God, look at this again, and you see what I'm saying? It, it took the anointing, it took the humanity piece out altogether, right? It said, the anointing, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannoy.
the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.